Y'all, today we need to talk about something quite crazy that's happening on Blizzard 101. I think it's something that literally everyone in the community is talking about, and honestly, I wanted to weigh in because it's become kind of a serious issue. So about a week ago, the update for the Nightmare dropped. Now, this has been an amazing update. As you guys can see, I've been running it up like literally crazy. And while that part of the update has been really, really cool, what has not been so amazing is that it's been accompanied by major glitches that affect other parts of the game. One glitch is at the end of Avalon. If you go into the Crystal Caves, for some reason, there was a glitch in introduced last week that basically makes the game think that you're in a raid your your stats get scaled down in a weird way right this looks like i have 4700 max hp even though i'm on you know a level 170 storm and if you attempt to leave it basically gives you this pop-up which i don't know it's this is not an actual dungeon so something seriously wrong is happening here i don't really know what it is very very good and not only are these like weird things happening if you're on the main storyline in avalon in crystal caves you cannot progress the other issue actually affects you know end game players which i would argue is even crazier that this was allowed to be in the game for a week right now if you attempt a ship fight at the end of wallaroo as in the last fight before the nightmare dungeon your defeat will not give you drops and and you won't be able to make progress on the badge that lets you craft it. The badge point is really, really important. That boss specifically, it drops a, the best of theme in the game right now. And if it's not going to drop you in a theme, at least clearing it should count for the badge, right? If there is going to be a glitch that stops you from doing something you want to do. But because defeating the invading fleets fight doesn't actually give you any progress towards the badge, you can't make any progress towards creating the Athame right now. Essentially, for what has now been a week, and what people are saying is going to be patched out of the game on Wednesday, which would make it about 9 or 10 days with a split in the game, for that long, there have been people in Avalon that can't continue their main storyline. There have been people at the end of Wallaroo that can't get gear that they otherwise would have gotten before this update. Now, all of this is not to say, you know, screw King's Isle. But I do think talking about these glitches is very, very relevant to a bigger discussion. The Nightmare Dungeon Drop is the first time we've had an update in January since I want to say like the, the days of Azteca. We're talking years since they've done any sort of update this frequently. And what set this one apart is they basically added the dungeon into the game without a test realm to test it out which means not only did the dungeon not get a test realm to be like you know play tested through it also made all these other glitches that would have probably been caught stay in live realm for this long what's surprising is that most people's concerns were that the actual nightmare dungeon the thing with the new mechanics that they added would be unable to be like played through because of a glitch maybe people assumed because there's a lack of testing the nightmare dungeon maybe would not be you know something you could play through this has happened in raids before which is why this is a valid thing to think about and yet much like the rest of the Wallaroo update, this dungeon has been a slam dunk. I think a lot of people, especially as they keep playing it, they're enjoying it. It's actually a challenging dungeon. It's not actually like completely inaccessible for people. And with the standard mode of this coming out, I think this is going to be a very, very solid world to play through, enjoy, quest through, farm in. But what's crazy is that the takeaway isn't that an update of this magnitude requires a test realm. I think the takeaway is that they need a better way to screen for bugs every time there's a new patch. That's important because I don't want this update to be like the reason we get less frequent updates if something like this happens again where they want to be ambitious with the dungeon at the end of a main world obviously at the same time nobody wants a glitchy update where either you can't do things like pvp because of glitches or you can't quest because of glitches what i'm very curious about is what is king's all gonna do to compensate for people that were actually unable to use their membership maybe even to quest and stuff for like what 10 days like me personally i don't want compensation for this week even though for example i couldn't pvp i was running the nightmare it was a perfectly you know well-designed thing i enjoyed it quite a bit i i don't fall under this but i feel like anyone who hit the quest in the crystal caves this week or something right after this update went out or anyone who hit the invading fleets quest or maybe people that farmed the invading fleets and didn't get any progress on their bed people like that were very like obviously affected by these glitches and these are like storyline glitches this is essentially what they pay membership for so in my opinion, if they are able to detect that this glitch did affect you, I think those people, a billion percent, deserve some sort of compensation. They've done free membership in the past where they could just, you know, flip a button and turn it on for everybody. Maybe if they have a way of doing it for certain people affected by certain things, it would be a really, really good idea to deal with things like this in the future. I don't think anyone who got affected by the Crystal Caves or even, I don't know, like the the, the end of Wallaroo, whatever these glitches are, I don't think they would complain if they were given a few days of memory. 
membership on their accounts alone. I do realize what I'm asking for here is probably something they don't have the tech to do yet, but I think compensation of some sort should definitely be on the table. Again, not saying this for me. I'm just saying like, if I were in those people's shoes, I'd be pretty pissed. So like, I feel like, you know, maybe as a gesture of goodwill and be like, yo, our bad, you know, they could do some. Maybe like, you know, give them potions. I don't know, give them elixirs, give them crowns. I think all in all, if they handle the compensation or at least, you know, communicate what they're gonna do to prevent, you know, glitchy updates like this, I'm happy. And I hope this doesn't put a stop to frequent updates. I've been playing Wiz a lot and I guarantee you I'm not the only one. I feel like, you know, the Wallaroo update, and like, you know, the, the quantity and the quality together, it's been nuts. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I, I, I don't want this to be the reason we don't get stuff like this frequently. It really brings me back to when Wiz was putting out two worlds a year. I think it's just a shame that it's been accompanied by what I do believe is justified anger at certain issues. You know what I'm saying? Like, that seems like, you know, like a struggle here. The good news is, I think Wizard 101 has not shied away from compensation in the past during, you know, events like this, especially during, like, you know, server outages or things that prevent you from progressing. I think the key is really finding who's affected and how to reward them back so they still feel valued as, like, you know, a customer. The deeper conversation here, for sure, is the fact that, you know, Wiz is changing so much. I feel like their schedule for updates is changing a lot the way they're you know approaching things like test realm is changing a lot and with the landscape around you know what a normal update feels like especially when it comes to like you know breadth and depth i feel like they need to do a little bit more in being transparent with the things that are changing why some of these glitches are happening more often how they're gonna you know improve moving forward i still think these are the key that like if, if we don't get that after all of this i feel like it's just gonna make people feel alienated it's gonna make people feel like yo they're doing these crazy updates yada yada whatever but there's so many glitches compared to what there used to be is my game that i used to play a lot changing that much i think to a lot of people experiencing like you know some sort of bug in an update that like prevents them from doing something like maybe pvp or even like you know farming something i feel like that's becoming somewhat normalized and i don't think that's a good thing even i i totally understand why updates should have bugs but i do want to understand why like you know maybe they're happening more so maybe i could figure out for myself how i feel about it i really think the root of it is they're just being more ambitious with the things they're adding into the game so it opens a door for more bugs i don't think that's actually as bad as oh they're just getting worse at putting out updates as always if y'all didn't know about this at least i hope the takeaway is you do know about it so maybe you can like stay tuned for king's Isle's response to all of this but let me know what y'all's opinions are on this do you guys think that if they ever do an update of this magnitude that they require a test run how do you guys think you would compensate the players that were affected by these storyline glitches if you were in king's Isle? all hot takes are welcome i'll be reading all the comments thank you guys for watching if somebody hasn't told you awesome today they doing something wrong i'll see y'all soon stay awesome and yeah, yo.